But let's talk a minute about Minnesota, and then we'll talk about Hong Kong, and again, we'll circle back to Trump's China policy declaration today. So obviously, I think most of you have seen the video of these four policemen, I mean, four policemen trying to subdue the, the, this uh, suspect, I guess, somebody they had placed under arrest. He's handcuffed. He's lying on the ground, handcuffed, handcuffed. And this policeman has his, his knee on the guy's neck. The guy's saying, I can't breathe. And he just keeps his knee on the neck. Ultimately, you know, the guy can't breathe, and he dies. He's on the ground. He's handcuffed. There are four of them, four policemen. And they have to kill him? I mean, this is a clear case of police abuse. And I hope there's video of every time this happens, because I, I think it happens more often than we would like to admit. Police killing people when they shouldn't be killed. Police using excessive force on people when they don't need to use excessive force. Now I'm all for if somebody is resisting police using force in order to subdue him. But even then, you, you need to train police on how to use force that's not deadly. There's plenty of ways to subdue somebody. To, to stop him resisting without killing them or without putting their life in danger. I mean, really, we really need to increase training in this country of police. Now, is, there is a perception that this is related to racism. And that is because the man who died is black. And there is a perception that this happens more often to blacks and it happens to whites. Now, it's true the more blacks are arrested than whites, so I don't know if more, but more proportionate to their population. And that disproportionately blacks are in the criminal justice system. But the question of whether this truly is a consequence of some implicit racism or if this is just a issue of police brutality that had nothing to do with a person's race is a question of fact. It's an empirical question. It's a question for the data. It's a question for investigators. It's a question to figure out what motivated the police to act so stupidly, irrationally, brutally, disproportionately. And they should be prosecuted for it if this is truly negligent. But I do think it is important to figure out is there a bias in our police force? Now, the response, unfortunately, to this tragic event, I can understand protests. I can understand wanting pe people, wanting their voices heard, particularly people who believe that this is motivated by racism and this is part of a pattern across the country. I, I don't think it's irrational completely for them to, to believe that. I think that they might be wrong, but it's not completely irrational. Again, that's a question of facts and it's a question of empirical evidence. There's certainly, this country has plenty of a history of racism for that not to be completely nuts to believe that at least some of these cases are motivated by racial issues. So I can understand people's frustration and people wanting to demonstrate and people wanting to have their voices heard. But to riot, to burn things down, to destroy private property, to interrupt with the ability of people to go about their daily lives is unbelievably disgusting, irresponsible, and criminal. And people should be prosecuted for doing it. They should not be treated with kid gloves. I don't advocate shooting them, but I don't advocate arresting them and putting them in jail. Destruction of private property is destruction of private property. By the way, destruction of, of a police station, which is what they did last night, is the equivalent of destruction of private property. It should not be allowed. It should not be tolerated. And you need to bring in as many police for, as necessary to stop this. And it's a sign of a breakdown in society. 
when this happens on a regular basis. And unfortunately, you know, this is the first time it's happened in a few years, but you remember all the riots and demonstrations and destruction of property that happened a few years ago, when again there was a, a bunch of police killings that seemed to, at the time, target blacks. It also looks like an opportunity for certain activists, certain out-of-town you know, anarchists or just people who want to see violence in the streets, they, they use these opportunities, they exploit these opportunities to go break stuff. And this is, this has to be brought under control. This has to be stopped. The nice thing to see is that leaders from left and right in at least Minnesota are condemning this. And they need to bring in, the fact that the police abandoned the police station and let them destroy it is pathetic. So while the killing of this man is incredibly tragic and horrible and, and, and just disgusting, this response is completely inappropriate and must be crushed. Not, again, crushed by use of the kind of physical force or kind of shooting that the president is indicating, but just crushed by the proper use of police force. Of course, this is anarchism. I, you know, whenever you see violent gangs battling each other, that's anarchism. The mafia is anarchism. This is what anarchism is. This is the essence of anarchy. And it, anarchism is always a response because it's, it's not a rational standalone ideology. So it's always a response to grievances. It's always a response to grievances by the state. It's a complete breakdown of order, it's a breakdown of civilization. You get anarchy where there's no civilization. You get anarchy where there's no, yeah, civilization is the best word for it. The Middle Ages, yeah. oh, anarchy. Bloody, in the bloodiest places, you know, some of the bloodiest cultures you've ever lived in. Okay, so, well, Trump is right that this needs to be put under control. The President of the United States should never be in a position where he's calling for the shooting of Americans. Even, even those who are violating rights. And by the way, the idea of shooting looters goes against at least a number of cases that the Supreme Court has ruled against. Again, if, if those looters constitute a threat to the police, if the police feel threatened by them, then shooting is legitimate. But the President of the United States should not be threatening this. It's completely inappropriate. And it's the kind of nuttiness that this President exhibits in office and has diminished the value of the presidency. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, the, 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 maybe not the Middle Ages, maybe the Dark Ages, pre-Middle Ages, but Middle Ages as well. All those wars, all those little city-states, all those, you know, slaughters, all that, you know. And if you look at the, by the way, the Middle Ages, or whatever you want to call it, Iceland, which is David Friedman's favorite example of anarchy, yeah, that's the Middle Ages. And that's barbarism, not civilization. And anarchy is statism, because anarchy necessarily leads to statism, because nobody wants to live in a state of anarchy. Nobody wants to live in a state of anarchy. So the people almost always demand, demand a strong man to clean things up. They demand a government to clean things up. Anarchy inevitably must lead to statism and to the worst kind of statism. And it does so primarily because it is a legitimization of might is right. And by leg anarchy legitimizes might is right. And by legitimizing might is right, it legitimizes the rule of the mighty. And again, I, you know, watch my debate on anarchy where I articulate why that is. But, the, you know, by creating competition among 
entities that provide might, you're legitimizing the idea that the more might you have, the more market power you should have, the more, the more control you should have, the more right you are. And, you know, just think about hostile takeovers, just about any the evolution of any kind of market. If there's a market in force, then over time, the guy with a bigger gun is going to be the dominant player. And whether he has good laws or bad laws, whether people like him or hate him, doesn't matter. He's got a big gun, and he's going to subjugate you, and that is the essence of anarchy. All right. Um, one of what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually... Uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourunbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...